Hey everyone, and welcome back to Cool Bike Projects. Great to see you again. Hey, it's been a few weeks, but we're finally here to build up this beautiful 1995 Team Marin frame set. This is a triple butted steel frame from back in the day. And we're gonna be doing what's called a resto mod. We're gonna add a suspension fork, a one by 10 drivetrain system, a dope set of wheels, and make this old bike sing like it's 2023. Check it out. So in my last video, we built up a beautiful 2023 Team Edition mountain bike that was sent to me by Marin Bikes. And we're supposed to be doing a comparison between the two of these, old technology versus new. So in this video, we're gonna be building up the original 1995. And in the final third video, we'll be doing a comparison side by side as we take these bikes down to Vernal, Utah and show you the difference in how they ride. Back in the day, this frame set had it all. Triple butted Fuji tubing, quad butted rear ends, a ridiculously long stem, and like so many bikes back then, the handlebars were only around 620 millimeters long. The shell is actually in really good shape. The threads are not uh, shot or anything. It's a standard 68 millimeter in width. And so we'll be able to use a number of different options for the bottom bracket. Here we have some nice Richie style dropouts, I believe. This thing is amazing. The only hard thing here is that this is a large size frame, which means we got a long top tube here. The top tube is about 22 inches in length. And if you look at a standard mountain bike today with a super short cockpit, about 22 inches is my size. These original double or triple butted forks here, all chromoly. Back in the day, people would actually switch out their aluminum forks for a set of good chromality forks. All right, let's build this thing. Looking at some of the parts we've got here, we do have a fair amount of used parts as well as takeoff parts. I have a set of Avid Speed 3 levers and brakes. Got a nice brand new WTB saddle. A pretty sweet little uh, race face. Uh, I don't know if it's a turbine or what this crank set is, but it came off of a old felt bike that I got last year. I use specialized handlebar, a nice set of Adventex uh, Microshift 1x10 drivetrain, thanks to Mike Carter. And then uh, this off-brand UG anodized purple iridescent blue <laughs> chain and cassette. I'm anxious to see how well this thing shifts under load, but it looks really pretty, so we're going to go for it. And then just for a little extra bling here, we got a set of purple anodized spacers and head cap. A used uh, Manitou fork. This is actually 80 millimeters in length using just old elastomers. They're actually still in pretty good shape and the seals look good. One of my new channel sponsors this year is Rock and Roll Lube. And they sent me a very interesting concentrate of degreaser slash cleaner called Miracle Red. And this was perfect for cleaning up the frame, as well as for degreasing some parts like the headset bearings, the bottom bracket shell, etc. You can buy it in a spray bottle form or in a concentrate. And trust me, a little bit goes a long ways. Not quite sure if it's citrus or what's in it, but it does a great job cleaning without any soapy residue. So this is a Ritchie Comp seal cartridge headset. These are about 32 bucks on Amazon right now with free shipping. And uh, not a bad little headset for the money. Here you can see the bottom one's been labeled with the Ritchie on it. It'll go just like that. Some people like to put the lube on the inside of the head tube. I like to just put it on the cup and just make sure that that very tippy part of the cup has got some grease on it. So as it begins to slide, it's not a big gooey mess. And 
we'll just take it nice and slow. It's going in good. And right there, I felt it kind of stop. You don't want to overdo this. You want to have it just feel like about the same amount of pressure until it kind of stops. Once it gets kind of stiff, just a tiny bit more and you're good. And that's the good part about using some grease on there is that that helps kind of lubricate it. So the pressure should feel the same all the way up and down. All right, up next, we are installing a race face. What are we calling these guys? This is an X-type bottom bracket, and it still works on a 30-year-old bike frame-ish because it still uses an English bottom bracket threads, and this is designed to be 73 millimeter wide. So even though this bottom bracket shell is 68, we can use spacers on both sides to even that out. Okay, so with this race face effect crank set here, the left side is what has a solid spindle on it. And what's really important is that these two silver areas that we get some lube on there, because that's where it's gonna run on the inside shaft of the bearings. At this point, this might be looking a little bit goofy to you, but if you compare this to a modern day bike, this is actually very similar. We have a, a longer top tube than normal. So we compensate for the, uh, for the standover weight and uh, positioning by shortening up the stem in the cockpit here. And ideally, if the weight is where it's supposed to be, you're gonna be right over that front axle without too much weight forward or too much back. If it was too short, you'd be kind of popping a wheelie every time you step forward too hard. I've calculated it to around 40 or 50 millimeters in length compared to the 130 it was, and we'll see how this does. Hey, I just want to put in a quick plug for Mark Cycling. They've been a great channel partner this last two, two and a half years. Every time I've had a bike build, they've been more than happy to send me grips and pedals, whether that's with my own projects or with people I've collaborated with. And I really appreciate their support. If you haven't ever seen their site on Amazon, just look up Mark Cycling. They make a whole bunch of cycling accessories, but tend to specialize in grips and bar tape. If you've been watching my channel for a while now, you know I'm really big on using new cables and housing as much as possible. There's something about using a brand new stainless steel cable with some nice ferrules and good SIS housing that just makes everything work better. Uh, down on my Amazon affiliate links, if you want to help support the channel, I list some good inexpensive brands that are out there. 
whatever you use, something else I would suggest is just making sure that you take your time to measure and cut things so that the loops have just enough slack to help you turn left and right without there being a huge loop hanging out front. Sometimes I'll get funny comments about this because people like to have their housing really short. I'd rather have something that doesn't have any issues turning right and left. One final hint when it comes to cables and reducing friction. Rock Lube has a really fabulous product called Cable Magic. I've mentioned before in one of my last videos, I've never seen uh, shifting work so well, especially when there are tight corners around derailers. Uh, that when you use just a couple drops of this product. Uh, over the years, I've tried TriFlow, tried other types of lubes, and they always suck in dust and cause problems. But this really, really seems to work. So something I just want to show you real quick is the chain line on this bike. Of all the tricky things to work out with a resto mod is the spindle distance from the front sprocket to where it lines up with the back cassette. So whether you have 11 speed cassette in the back, 12 speed or a 10 speed like this one, we've effectively added about a half an inch of total distance from the smallest cog here to the tallest cog in the back. And since we only have one sprocket in the front here, if it's too far one way or the other, the chain is gonna skip and pop around because the chain line is not correct. So the one thing I caution you towards is as you're doing something like this, if you have the ability to change out spindle lengths, you're gonna to have to kind of mess back and forth by just millimeters of spacers from one side to the next to make sure that this line is perfectly down the middle here. No matter what you do though, by the time you get down to the bottom cog, You'll notice that that chain line is quite off here. We're going from one side all the way down to here. It's going to look like it's almost off by an inch. And same thing top side. Hope that makes sense. Your chain line here, it's a big deal as far as where this lines up compared to the middle one. And the sweetest spot you can be in is middle cog, middle cog. And as long as that's running nice and smooth, that your cable tension is set correctly, you should be just fine. Thanks for watching everyone, and please feel free to enter your questions down below in the comments. If you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please do. In our next video, we'll be testing these two bikes side by side in Vernal, Utah. See you in a couple weeks.